section 3.1 in Timberlake chemistry and today we're going to talk about how matter is classified. So if you remember matter is anything that's actually stuff. So stuff is something that would have mass and take up space. So anything that would have weight or mass where there's actually stuff crammed into a certain location that is matter. And we'll see that um, right now there's about 118 types of matter in the universe that are called elements. Uh, there's 91 or 92 or so that you can dig out of the ground that are naturally occurring and then the rest are man-made lab, uh, made in a lab. So when you, def when you describe matter you're describing their properties. So what does it look like? What does it do? So you can have physical properties such as it's yellow or it's uh, shiny. You could have chemical properties like it blows up when you put it in water or it reacts with this or reacts with that or doesn't react at all. Those are properties of them. So a pure substance is anything that has a specific property to it. So an element, for instance, is a pure substance because an element um, is one type of matter and it has its own unique properties. So gold is the color of gold. It's metallic. It, he, it, it uh, has a certain boiling point, a certain freezing point. It, uh, it's conductive of electricity. It's conductive of heat. And so there's all kinds of things you can just say about it. You can describe it. Those are its properties. And so pure substance has its own definite properties. Also, it has its own recipe. So for instance, gold is only gold. If you have some kind of a compound like water, it's got its properties of, or its definite composition, H2O, and that would be a compound. So that's the second type of pure substance. A compound has two or more elements combined chemically. So either they're sharing an electron, uh, or they're, they're, they've stolen an electron and become uh, charged ions, and then those charged ions are attractive in some ways. In any case, they're binding with uh, electrons, and so they're not just sitting beside each other, they're actually attached to each other and have the unique properties as a result. So elements, um, there are 118 elements. Up through uranium that you can dig out of the ground, I think number 43, technetium, I don't know that anyone's ever found. Uh, other than that, everything up to 92 is uh, natural. Anything past from 93 on up to 118 have been made in a lab and would either be very stable or very unstable, uh, but at least uh, they have proven that, that, that they put it together and it's counted as an element. Elements have, its, uh, have a uh, symbol, so for instance Cu, copper, Pb, lead, um, those, are the, those are the symbol names for the element. Compounds have their own recipe, so they have their own definite composition. So NaCl would be table salt, sodium chloride. Uh, sucrose, CC, C12H22 over 11, water, H2O. So a compound, two or more in a definite ratio. So there's definite recipe. So um, remember that sodium and chlorine are both elements. And when you put them together into a compound, they react together with new properties. So sodium has its own properties. Chlorine has its own properties. When sodium and chlorine react together and are forming a compound, they don't have the properties of sodium and they don't have the properties of chlorine. They have new properties. So table salt has a new property from sodium or from chlorine, um, even though that they're made up of the, those elements. They don't retain their same properties. A mixture is anything that's just beside each other. So if you put salt and pepper or you mix sugar and sand together, that's a mixture. It, one part of that mixture is going to retain the, the properties of sand, the other part is going to retain the properties of sugar. And even though it looks like each other, you could, you could disguise one for the other or mistake them, uh, they would definitely have chemical properties or physical properties that would be unique to that. And so a mixture is simply salt and pepper put on a plate beside each other but not reactive not putting not with any new properties but maintaining their old properties in one location or another and there's different types of mixtures if you have a mixture you can physically separate that mixture so this picture is showing a mixture going through a filter paper so that the so that the large molecules are held back on one side of the paper 
and the liquid is going through the paper. Anything dissolved in the liquid would go through the paper. So homogeneous means everywhere the same. <clears throat> so if you were to have a fluid, say air, um, everywhere in that air there's a same mixture of air. So you would have nitrogen and oxygen mostly in the air. That's a mixture, a very uniform mixture. And everywhere you look in the air, you're going to have about the same uh, ratio. So that is homogeneous. It's everywhere the same. So I think of Kool-Aid as homogeneous. So it's a uniform mixture with no parts of it visible. If you have a solution, okay, a solution is um, uh, going back to going back to uh, homogeneous, a solution would be anything, uh, would be a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture uh, that's usually in some kind of a fluid. Now here is a brass, which is copper and zinc, and everywhere it's the same, that is brass. That's, that is a mixture, it's a solid mixture. It's the only one I can think of. Um, so a Kool-Aid would be a liquid mixture where you have this, you have the sugar and you have the citric acid, you have the red dye and you have the water, and everywhere in the in the jug it's the same. Um, that would be uh, homogeneous. Ho heterogeneous means it's different in different places. So oil and water doesn't mix, or oil and water and pieces of pieces of uh, pepper or something that you got mixed in salad dressing doesn't exactly mix. Everywhere is somewhere different. That's heterogeneous. So beef stew is a mixture of potatoes and carrots and beef and broth and whatever. Everywhere you look is going to be a different part and that's going to be a heterogeneous mixture. Um, and many of the parts are visible. You can see the differences between them. So when you separate them, you either have pure substances which have their own properties or mixtures which retain their properties. And then of the pure substances, you can either have elements which one type of matter or a compound which is two or more elements combined chemically with its own properties. So those would be pure substances. Then mixtures can be separated into homogeneous mixtures which are uniform everywhere and heterogeneous mixtures which are different, uh, different aspects that you can look at differently in different parts. So it's a non-uniform composition. Okay, I hope that helps.